How do you string your bow? I string mine that way. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. This is the first video in the Patreon series. You guys have made the achievement. Um, $400 a month is just mind blowing to me. That is allowing me to purchase the things I need in order to keep these videos rolling. And I just wanna say a huge thank you for that. Uh, but in this video, it's gonna be a little longer because I'm gonna go in a little more detail and I'm going to turn this stick or a piece of this stick into a bow circle um, compass. Um, I don't know exactly what you call it, but basically it's gonna be a, a little bit longer than four foot long. Uh, it'll be about an eighth inch thick and about an, uh, well, about an inch, well, actually I'll probably do it this side, an inch and a quarter um, wide. And basically what that is is it's a thin strip of wood that you can bend. It's still rigid enough that it will bend and hold a shape with a nice arc to it. Uh, but it's flexible enough, you can, you can actually bend it to a decent shape, but not so flexible that it becomes wompy in the middle. So we're going to go through a couple different processes of planing this down to shape and then uh, cutting a long strip all the way off of this thing. And I know that kind of scares a lot of people. How do you cut such a long straight line? And I'm going to go into that. So let's actually jump into this and take a look. So I'm going to start by cutting this to length and right now it's at like uh, five and a half feet long. And yes, I could make one five and a half feet long, but I really don't need five and a half feet. I only really want it like four and a half feet. So I'm gonna cut a foot off of this and I do not care at all how long it actually is. Oh well. So I'm gonna put it on here, somewhere around that spot. I probably have about 14 inches or so hanging out. Grab the saw and cut it down. I like to start on the push stroke. Not sure why, but I do. Some people like to pull it back and get that groove going. I, I just see that as kind of useless. If once you learn to hold the weight of it with this bottom horn and you actually lift up on the saw, um, use that to, to take the weight off of the blade up here. You can put a very light touch on that first pass and you've already made a cut. A lot of people have asked me why I don't use a bench hook. Um, because I don't. <laughs> I don't know. So let's put this down here. And the first thing I want to do is plane one side nice and flat and smooth, and then we will uh, rip it down. So let's put up this planing stop. About there. I love that planing stop. I didn't think it would be something I'd use quite a bit, but I use it all the time now. And then here you can see as I went along, I got a good cut here, a little bit of a cut here, and a little bit of a cut here. So I've got a valley and a valley I've got to get rid of. One of the nice things about a big joiner plane is it tells you where you still got to work and where you're good. So I'm just going to keep going down this until I get a nice flat cut all the way across. Now this particular stuff is old oak. Um, it's been air dried for about 15 years. It's got a lot of quality to it. I'm also using quarter sawn stock, so you can see all the rays coming through here. So that means all the growth rings are going this way. So when I cut it, it's going to be a very, very stable piece of wood that's not going to want to move on me. Which for something this thin and delicate, that's actually very valuable. Okay, so now we're coming down to about the thickness I want. Take a couple strokes out the middle here. And I'm taking strokes until I'm not getting anything here in the middle. And then I'll take a couple strokes end to end. This will just let me know that it's perfectly flat. End to end. So it skipped right there in the middle. There we go. So I've got a nice flat surface here all the way across. Now what I could end up doing is if I really wanted to and be an aggressive and make a lot of curls and have a fun time in here, is I could plane this whole thing down to an eighth inch thick. But ain't nobody got time for that. Let's have some fun with the saw. 
So, now that I have three sides planed, I want to make a mark all the way along here so that I can make a saw, uh, so I can kerf all the way down this particular piece of wood. So let's set this to something around an eighth inch, actually a little bit more, like uh, three sixteenths or so. Uh, there. And then I'm gonna use this to mark in from that side. I'm just gonna keep going along here. Oop. Let the grain run away with it. I'm gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. So now I've got this big beefy saw. Um, this is probably a bit aggressive for this small of a stock, but oh well, I want to have fun and I really like this saw. It is a lot of fun. I thought about using my frame saw, um, but I'm not into that much overkill. <laughs> now I'm starting up too high here because this staff is all the way down on the ground. Most of my cutting I want to do between here and right down here, but I'll have to kind of raise my elbow up and I'm going to start back here. I'm going to stay away from that line. Because what I want to do is cut all the way down this, staying away from the line, a good sixteenth to an eighth of an inch, and then I'll plane back to that line once I get it. So, let's start this thing. Okay, now I didn't even look at this other side to tell because I, I know I'm fairly decent at it. A little farther away from the line than I want to be, but that's okay. I can plane back to it. So let's open this thing up. I'll rotate it around, lift it up six inches or so. And second verse, same as the first. Ought to get better, but it's a lot of work. Then, do it again. So far looking good. Lift it up another six inches or so. Clamp it down. Take a break, breathe a moment, and cut again. And here I'm gonna share with you one of the all-time ultimate best tips of hand tool woodworking. This is something that I don't tell everyone, and so that's why this is, this is being posted to Patreon. But uh, when you're making a long cut and you need a break for a moment, pull out your phone and shoot an Instagram picture. People love Instagram pictures of hand tools. It gives you a chance to breathe. <laughs> and then as I get close to the end, I'm gonna leave about an inch in the jaw, and I'm gonna cut all the way down, and that last inch, I'm gonna just break. So, I've got about an inch left there, and I could flip it over and cut the rest of it, but I know this is fairly straight grained, and I want to prove to myself that it is good straight grain. So what I'm gonna do is just oh, pull it out here because this thing's become very flexible. I'm gonna break it. And there we go. Perfect, nice little break. And I know that this is good straight grain and will treat me well. So let's plane down this side and make this thing a little bit more flexible. So right now it's a bit stiff for what I want, but I think we can make it work. So now we've cleaned up this strip uh, now that we've <laughs> cleaned it up, we've cut it, I'm going to do it again. So I put the stop down to the point where I know I'm not going to hit it, as long as I'm careful. And then I can bring in the plane. And the plane's going to hit some of those high spots and miss everything else. And the first few passes are going to be sk skipping, skipping. Skipping. 
And once it starts to get good, clean, long strips, then I'm going to get down and look at those marking gauge lines that I put in earlier and see how close I am to them. Because one of the things I do want is I want this to be a parallel thickness from end to end. So I got a fairly decent curl except for right here. Yeah, I can see the whole way along it, I'm a little less than a sixteenth of an inch away from it. Except for right, oh no, that's right on. So yeah, we'll do a little bit more. I'm also checking as my thickness goes down that I'm not going to hit that stop. Good clean cut from end to end, and I'm getting close to it. Now, now that I'm getting close to the line, I don't care that I hit that line exactly. I'm looking for something that has the flexibility that I want. And that's getting close, but I want a little bit more flexibility than that. And really, that's the important thing. <laughs> How much flexibility do you want in it as you now get to this point? Take some off the other side. Tap this down a little bit. <laughs> uh, now, if I get, want to make this much thinner, what I can do now is put down a piece of double sided tape and glue it right down to the bench. But I really don't need it much thinner, I just need another pass or two, so I'm not going to waste my time with the tape. As long as I can hold it with my hand, we should be okay. Let's see what that gets me. Yeah, see that's right about the arch I'm looking for. So, now we've got this thing flexible. Really good curve, I like that. Let's do some detail things. Okay, so now that it basically has its shape, I could come at this with a plane, and I just want to kind of round off these corners, or I could come at it with a spoke shave. Spoke shave's a lot more fun. Or I could come at it with a rasp or a file. Rasp is probably the quickest way and the way I generally prefer. I'm just kind of round the corner a little bit. This one's a bit aggressive for that use, but oh well. Then I'll finish it off with a file. Just kind of smooth it out. Clean off this corner. Just like that. Flip it over, do the other corner. Just giving it a little bit of a shape. I don't really care much. It's a, sh it's a shop tool. I could spend a lot of time to make this look really pretty. I just want to round the edges for my own fun. Now we need to drill a hole through here on either end and uh, put a string on it. It's done. Now I'm basically just going to eyeball a hole. I really don't care too particular about where it is. Just something that looks somewhat decent. Right about there. And then drill a hole. And I'm just going to go ahead and blow out the other side because it's so thin. The amount of work needed. Oh well. Yeah, it's going to have a little bit of chips there. Oh well, I don't care. And then we're going to come over to this side and do the same thing again. Something that looks about right. And I'm going to blow out the other side again. Just like that. Oh no, I blew out. Oh well. <laughs> I want to clean this up now that I'm looking down on here. Just kind of round this over a little bit more. There we go. It's basically built. Now we just put a string on it, put some finish on it, and we'll have a new tool in the shop. So everyone at this point is asking, what finish are you going to put on it? Well, if you're a patron, you know it's, it's boiled linseed oil. <laughs> and I'm just going to rub the boiled linseed oil on. If I slop it over on my bench, oh well. That's just more finish on my bench. Isn't that nice? I like how that works. And this is the fun part where it all comes to life. 
This tool has taken me, what, 25, 30 minutes so far, if that, even while shooting a video. Um, really, they don't get much simpler and easier than this. And once I put this on there, I'm gonna let it sit for 15, 20 minutes, come and wipe off the excess, possibly put on a second coat. Um, I'll rub it down with paste wax, which I don't know if I'll show that, depends on when I'll come back. Actually, I probably won't even put paste wax on this one. Although I might. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> and then, tie a string on it, and it's ready to go. So I'll show you the string here in a little while too. So, let's let that soak in for 15, 20 minutes, come back, wipe it off, and we'll see if I need a second coat. Just set it up on the edge like that. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes, and it is mostly good. Um, I'm still seeing a lot of wet residue on it, so that means that it is fully absorbed. So I'm just going to come through the rag and wipe off the excess. Just like that. Wipe down the bench, give it a new coat of finish. Ooh, careful, the lid's off. I'll put the rag out for safety in a little bit. So I'm actually just going to let this sit overnight and come back to it tomorrow, put the string on it, and we'll be good to go. I don't think I'm going to put paste wax on it. No need for that right now. Okay, so this has been drying overnight. I'm not going to put any uh, finish on it right now, but I just like the way it came out with those rays sticking all the way across both sides. I'm going to take some string and push it through one of the holes and tie it off. Just a simple square knot. Ooh, there we go, back around. And then I'm gonna pull out enough string whoo, to pull my spoke shave off the bench. <laughs> pull out enough spring, string to get down to the other end and then back up a little bit. And then I'm gonna cut it right here with a pair of scissors that I don't have. Then I can cut it right here with a chisel. Tie off this end. Just so that it doesn't fray. Nobody likes a frayed knot. But um -ch. So now I have this small triangular piece. This is left over from making the bow ties on my leg vices. So I'm just going to put that in here. I'm going to drill two holes in it. Actually, I'm going to drill three holes in it. So the same drill I had earlier. One in the middle. Not really caring a whole lot about them. It's just a functional piece. One a little farther out. And then one a little farther out this way. All you need is a stick of wood with three holes, something somewhat strong, and this holly is fairly good for that. So all we need to do with this is string it on. So now I'll take this string and I will push it through one hole, and then I'll push it through the middle hole, opposite side, opposite direction. Of course the string is snagging a little bit. And then we have the toggle here, I can come through the other hole in the beam, and from that I want to come back to this first hole. So I gotta slide this down a little ways. Come back to this first hole, push it in through that first hole. I wonder if I left enough string. I might have, it might not have. Looks like I left just enough. And I want to tie it back onto itself. So just another square knot here. Yes, I could get fancy and put something else on there, but I was never very good at the Boy Scouts. I'm woodworking. <laughs> There, and then with that knot on there, we can at any time pull this down and set any particular radius, and that toggle will hold it at that radius. So now I can set this on a board, and then I can use a pencil and go, and then I can cut to that line. So with one hand, I can now draw a radius, and I can make this just about any radius I want, just with a simple adjustment of the toggle, and uh, like that. A bowstring. And now I can draw out that radius. And there it is, a very simple bow that I can set up 
and now put to an arc and I can draw whatever radius or curve I want so I can set down and go and draw my line. And I am really kind of in love with how simple and easy this is to adjust and I can create pretty much any radius I want with this very simple tool. Probably took me a total of, what, 30, 40 minutes total and I have a tool that I can use for a long time to come. Now is this perfect? No, I probably could have done things a little bit better, but for 20, 30 minutes of work, even if I were to snap this tomorrow, I'll make another one. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. So I hope you like this and I do want to say thank you. Uh, you guys and Patreon really are the reason why I can keep putting out this and uh, that's all I can say. <laughs> thank you for that. I hope you enjoyed this and until next time, have a wonderful day.